Hello Watch Fam, I'm the Chirpy Panda and today you get to watch me fail spectacularly at trying to build my own custom watch. It has um, been an interesting ride but I've learned a lot so you know you guys can come along with the ride I should say. Watch all the mistakes I make so that you don't make the same mistake and hopefully by the end of it you would have learned something through my failure. Coming right up after this intro. Now, welcome back guys. So start with your custom watch build. There's a few things that you need to get this. Keep in mind that building your own watch is different to building something that is from scratch, including the movement. This is really about assembling your watch with parts that you can source online somewhere. So the first thing you'll need is a case that it will come with the crystal on top, crown, as well as a back. With this case, it should come with something like this, a movement holder ring, depending on the movement you have this ring will change and obviously you will need the movement itself what i've done is i've opted to use a myota 81 a movement for this build along with the movement there will be some screws and a case clamp which we'll talk about shortly some hands for the movement as well as a actual dial so i'll be using a sterile dial that basically it's quite basic very empty we'll get to that soon and those are the main parts that you need a few tools that i would recommend using and this is completely depending on what you have is a fine pair of tweezers so these type of tweezers have very very fine tips to help you pick up for example the hands or small screws flat screwdriver to screw in those small screws so those screws is to hold the dial to the actual movement so we need to use that for that maybe a, a microfiber wipe of some sort so they can clean things before they go in also this little tool which is used to install adhere the hands to the dial as well as the actually it's more the movement it's a little pressy thing but i think there's one way it comes with the, just the pen part so it just depends on your preference these are very cheaply i'll leave the link down below so you can get everything that you need what i've also done is have one of these jeweler cases where I can put the movement in and keep all the dust away and a little uh, squeegee thing to blow any dust off uh, anything we're working on these can be had for uh, quite cheap and obviously last but not least these little uh, finger condoms because <laughs> it's a finger cut because obviously you should never ever touch the movement with your bare hands because of the oils on your hand could over time tarnish or, or leave stains on the movement so let's begin with step one installing the dial onto the movement now as i mentioned before we should never really touch the movement using our bare fingers because of the oils on our skin could leave marks on the movement over time which would look not very good and overall tarnish the still of this movement so to prevent that from happening the recommended way obviously is to purchase these little finger condoms or finger cuts so i'll recommend index thumb and on your right hand but what i'm going to do is also do it on my left because i'm such a klutz so now i've got my uh, finger cuts all done what i can do is now take the movement out of the package so this is myota a21a as you can see it is functioning perfectly well the rotor is very very flimsy is it light because it keeps spinning quite easily and as you can see it is actually currently functioning i have to loosen it up a little bit first so anyway so this is what we have right now what we want to do next is to put our dial onto the actual movement so this is the dial that i've purchased it comes with a date window and was designed specifically for the myota movement has a vintage style if i can show properly kind of like gloom kind of slightly yellowish look for it so what i'll do is i'll pop this down behind it there are four legs now i just need to figure out which one i need to remove to, so that i can fit onto the movement let me try and figure out where the legs are. As I'm trying to put the, the dial on, I want to line up the date on the three o'clock because the crown is designed to be on the three o'clock. So from what I can see, the two legs that I need to remove is on approximately the eight o'clock and the two o'clock. So I need to make sure that I'm removing the appropriate one. So all you need to do is just pick it up and kind of twist it a little bit. Now, do not use too much force. I think anything to do with watch watches in general, the amount of force you need is actually very, very little. And now try to see if that fits. Once again, lining up. And now it fits like a glove. 
So what we need to do now, we need to protect the seconds, the minute and the hour in the middle here, because we need to turn the movement around so that we can lock it in. When I say lock it in, I mean to lock the dial onto the actual movement. So we need a little pillow. But if you do not have it like me, we can place a few of these kind of soft material. This pad is already quite soft, this blue pad underneath. This blue pad is already designed a soft cushiony thing. But what I do is I'll use some of these things and I'll fold it up uh, into something really soft. And then I'll put the movement directly onto it so in here this is where the leg of the dial is hand right now and in there is a little hole for a tiny screw to go in so the screw needs to go into that tiny hole let's see if i can actually do it hopefully i can do keep in mind i'm an absolute noob at this but uh this is my first custom watch build Okay, so I finally got the screw in. So I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. Now, this is just to hold the legs in place. So don't go over the top with tightening the screws. I think that's that's as tight as it's gonna go. So that was um, one side. Now I'm gonna do the other side, the other leg. I think this is as tight as it's gonna go. Once again, I'm absolutely new to this. So now we have it. We've got the dial nicely in place. Let me get a quick squeeze. Probably need to wipe it with a, a microfiber later on. Now that we've got the dial exactly how we want it, what we need to do now is to figure out where to put the hours, minute, and the second hand on this dial. So what we'll do is pull the stem all the way out so now it's all the way out and then turn the stem clockwise so that it can set the hour. Now what we want to do while we're setting the time is keep an eye on the date window. When we see the date window start rotating by itself, we want to slow down. And as soon as the date changes to the next day, so from the 10th to the 11th, we'll know that it's midnight till 12 a.m. in the morning. And then we'll set the hours and minutes pointing to 12. Yep, okay, you see how it's turning? Bang. That's 12 o'clock midnight. So what we'll do is now put the hour and the second hand directly pointing upwards. Remember which way to turn. If it doesn't work, then turn the other way. So here is my set of hands that I have. I'll put that on there. Now this is where, if you got something like jeweler's magnifying glass like this, I'm not sure you can see it, then you can check whether the hand is on correctly. So let me just jump in. Okay, I think the hand's on. Uh, give it another push. Now I've already stuffed up the hands, I'm gonna be honest. So what I did was I asked, uh, okay, maybe I can get rid of the mark. Oh, oh no, oh no. Okay, I stuffed it up more. No, no. Mistakes were made, guys. So what I did was um, I used my very fine tweezers and picked up the hour hand and I scratched the hand. So don't do that. What you need to do is use vertical. So this is kind of like a blue tack where it doesn't leave any residue and you can use that to pick up the, the hand that you want and then place it on the dial correctly. So that's what you should do. After you push the hands in, give it a quick check to see if they're touching. So what you need to make sure, and obviously you won't be able to see it, is that the hour and the minute's hands are not touching. Otherwise, it obviously won't work, would it now? And now, time to place the second hand. Is it actually in? Let me just double check. Cause that, that doesn't look like it's right. And I'm extremely scared of getting it. Oh, hang on. It's not going in. You know, I might have to change my my thing above. Bob. So these hand installation tools, they come with a few different settings. So I think this one's probably too big for it from the looks of it. I need a small one. Okay, so I've got another one of those uh, pushy things. Oh, it's still not working, is it? Got the 
this should work. Oh, did it work? Oh. Sugar. I bent the second hand. Badly. Why didn't it fit? It just didn't fit in. Okay guys, so failed. I ruined everything. Okay guys, I've had my cry. I have my wails. Mistakes were made on the long way, but I'm back to face my uh, greatest fear. So that's the damage done to the second hand. The actual stem is bent like because I've used way too much pressure. I shouldn't have done it. I used the same amount of pressure as the sec uh, minutes and hours hand and that's incorrect. And the whole second hand is completely bent. Can you guys see how the stem is broken? This cannot be used. We will never be able to return back to normal, unfortunately. So I've just have to go to throw it away and buy a new one. So my build will now have no seconds hand, but I'll continue. I'll, I'll push through. The next problem I encountered was that I used all well, my screwdrivers as the rotical holder. So rotical is this little kind of blue type looking thing to get the dust off the dial. I was basically doing this. So here's the dial. Can you see that really fine? Oh, look, there's two of them. Oh my God. Very, very fine hairline scratch on the dial. That's because I used a screwdriver to hold the rotical. Never, ever, ever do that. Worst mistake I've ever made. All right, despite all this, I am going to push on and still, still try to complete this build, albeit that it is, honestly speaking, completely ruined now. And I'm gonna replace this with my little pad here. So I'm gonna continue on, try to get any dust off. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is try to put this into the actual case. So you see that stem? That stem is from the actual movement. Let's open this case back. So I'm gonna gently place the case over. Oh, hang on. Before you do that, we're gonna make sure that the case is completely dust free. So what we'll do is we'll squidgy that thing. Okay, looks like there's no dust now. The date is at the three o'clock. You place it over gently. Turn the whole thing around. Now, we should have movement in there. And this one is the movement ring. You see the little nookie? This little like edge? That's where the stem is supposed to go. So we'll place this in so, so gently. Now, theoretically speaking, everything should be in the right position. So what we'll do is we'll place the crown in to lock it in place. The stem and the crown, of course. There we go. You can now see the movement going. Handwriting works, but this is not locked in yet. So I'm gonna pull the crown out slightly so that the movement stops. Movement's completely stopped now. What is now missing is the casing clamp and the screws, which probably have to zoom in more, but there's one that goes here, another one that goes right here. Um, if I just move this here, one that goes right there. Yeah, that's not gonna fit. <laughs> No blood away, it's not even remotely close. Like it doesn't sit flush to it. So I think this is it guys. I don't think I can do too much else. We've got the casing clamps here and here. It's not gonna stay in the case. So I guess this is it. I have to remove it. Well, that was an interesting, interesting ride. And I guess hopefully you've learned something from my mistakes after viewing all the terrible things I've done. But I can list it out for you if you didn't catch everything. Number one, I used way too much pressure installing the seconds hand. In addition to that, I was supposed to wait for my the stem of the seconds hand to actually attach to the pillion of the movement before applying uh, any pressure. I've learned that afterwards, obviously. So don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Number two, I use a screwdriver because I was lazy to hold my rotical to dab away the dust. However, a screwdriver, especially of that such a small fine one, a watch one, 
it's extremely sharp and it scratched the dial which is it you cannot replace it uh, it cannot be fixed oh forgot about that on the second hand the pinion is forever stuffed it will never go back in that kind of position so i can never install another second hand i've stuffed that moving up royally so it will only be a minute and our base i guess washed out if i can even install it properly number three for some reason the screws for the case clamp doesn't attach or is too big for the movement i don't know if it's because of you know made in china there's a specific one for the myota a21a movement that i need to get and i do not have it so i was actually forcing it a little bit too much which means i've grinded away the threading for the actual screws for the next if I was ever to uh, find an actual screw that fits it. So I've stuffed up that movement royally. When I was trying to install a lot of it, it's cut. When I was trying to install the screw, I kept saying to myself, why isn't this screwdriver magnetic? And of course it's not magnetic. You're not supposed to have a magnet next to a bloody watch with mechanical movements and this, you know, the, the actual spring could get magnetized, which screws up the whole watch. So like so many stupid things. I think the other thing I didn't do is I believe there's actually a movement spacer between the movement and the dial, which was the initial ring that I initially thought was the case um, ring, which it wasn't, the, the golden one was. I think I was supposed to put it on top of the movement and then put the dial on top so that there's a bit of space, but it worked out okay without it. So I'm not sure that that's actually the case or not. Could potentially be something else, I don't know. And also I, I applied way too much pressure on the minute's hand because it's ever so slightly bent and the counter kind of edge of the, the hand isn't touching the hour hand but it's very close so eventually it's gonna it's gonna stuff up so yeah i think i stuffed up every single step the youtube videos you see is extremely easy so i thought oh I'll cut two three hours of working on this it'll be fine you know i built gundams before it's the same thing right i built lego no it's not after this experience i've gained so much appreciation of watchmaking it, this is nothing compared to actual watchmaking it's watch assembling and i failed that big time so i'm gonna try again give me you know a couple of times I'm, I'm probably gonna try it a couple of times off camera so that there's no pressure of filming and then i'll try once more and do it properly then i can say that i've done it and this will be my challenge for 2021 <laughs> um anyways i hope you guys enjoy watching me fail if you liked it please hit the like button if you dislike it hey hit that dislike button i dislike everything i've done you leave me a nasty comment below if you want and say how bad i was i know i'm bad that's why the title is that i've failed at building my own custom watch and if you haven't already subscribed consider subscribing hit that bell bell notification button so that you can get notified properly because youtube doesn't give me enough love anyways you guys have been amazing i'm the chubby panda and i'll catch you in the next one peace